Hi, this is part two of the chapter four homework exercise on spreadsheets. And here we're calculating the internal rate of return. All these problems are detailed in the textbook and the PowerPoint slides. So if you don't understand anything here, it'd be a good idea to read the textbook where they actually, out, actually have these same types of problems and go over how to use Excel in the textbook as well. Now, if we're trying to calculate internal rate of return for a single cash flow, we want to use the rate function. So I'm going to go and search for rate. Here it is, and it opens up this arguments box. So n per would be the number of periods, or the number of payment, um, the number of, well they said periods. So this is, a, this is five years, so that's going to be our number of periods. There's no payment, because this is not an annuity or cash flow. Uh, the present value would be the cost of the investment, and then the future value would be the payoff of the investment. And you can see how I nicely put these little PV, FV information in here. Okay, so these are only three fields that we need to fill in. Uh, that's the only three pieces of information we have. So if I hit enter, it comes up with a rate. So this 6.96 is the return if I invest $1,000. And this is a negative because when you make an investment, you have a negative cash flow. And when the investment is over and you get your payoff, you have a positive cash flow. So that's why it's denoting it as a negative here. So let's scroll down to the second problem on this page, which is internal rate of return for a stream of income. So we make our initial investment in year zero, and then we have a stream of dividends and a final payoff in year seven. So if we're gonna do this calculation, we wanna use an internal rate of return function, because this is a multiple um, cash flow scenario. So all we have to do here is highlight all of the va value values from year zero to seven and hit enter. And we get our internal rate of return of 9.32% for a stream of income. Okay, so let's move into the growth rate. So this is the next uh, question. Let me make this bigger. So growth rate for a dividend stream. So here, if we're going to do an annual growth rate, then um, we're, we're going to use the, the uh, rate function again. So, and the hint here is that it says annual growth rate. So rate is probably a good function to use. So I'm going to click on rate. And the first thing I'm going to do is for the periods, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to put a formula in. I'll take 2014 minus 2005 to come up with my period, the number of periods for the investment. So uh, year, and this would be nine periods, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The first year is year zero, it doesn't count as a period. Now payment, there are no payments here, so that's zero. Or blank, you could leave that blank as well. There are no payments. Because we're looking at, we went from $1.14 to two seventy. dollars So we want to know what's, what growth rate would, would move on a yearly basis go from 114 to 270. And so our, our present value, we're gonna put in, I'm gonna put in negative, because the first year, uh, or year zero of a dividend stream should be negative, uh, because it's, uh, in order for Excel to calculate a rate of return, the present value always must be negative. And then the future value, I'm gonna put in the last year here, is 270 is the future value. And then let's see, based on these three inputs, if we can calculate the information. 10.5% is the return. So basically, if you escalated a $1.14 at a 10.05% for nine periods, you would get $2.70. Okay, so we'll go to the next slide here, and we have, okay, let me just resize this, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a formula. I want to add the ending price of 2010 plus, let's see, hold on, I'm going to get my formula right. Parentheses, I want to take my ending price and I want to add to that the dividend paid for the year and I just want to subtract the ending price. Okay, and then I want to divide this by the ending price to give me a 14% return because it's it's based, the holding period return is basically new minus old divided by old, but I have to add in the dividend as income. So for HP, 
I could do the same thing for HP, where I take do um, HP's. Uh, first, I got to use my parentheses. HP's price, and I want to add to that the dividends paid for 2010, and then I want to subtract last year's price. Close parentheses, and then divide by last year's price, and that gives me my holding period return. Now, for the S&P 500, it's a little simpler because I don't have a dividend here, so I'm just going to take just going to take the new price minus the old price divided by the old price to get my percentage. So that's how you would calculate the holding period return for IBM, HP, and um, S&P 500. Because we have, so when I do 2011, it's going to be uh, very, it's going to be a similar formula. So I'm going to say plus 2011 stock price plus the dividend for 2011. Minus 2010, close parentheses, divide by old or 2010. So I get next year's, this would be the holding period return from 2011 to 2010. Now what happens if I just move this formula over? So I just take this formula and I move it over. And you can easily, once you have your formula, formula established here, you can easily move it over. Um, but what you would do sort of like I did where I put in the formula manually to double check it, then you can move it over and see if it doesn't change. That's basically how you would calculate the holding period return for a situation where we had the price, the dividend of IBM, price dividend of HP, and then S&P by itself. So you can compare S&P 500 went up 12.8%, IBM beat the S&P 500, but HP beat both the S&P 500 and IBM. Okay, so then you would just have to continue this all the way down till 2014. Okay, so that is a video on how to calculate the holding period return, growth rates for a dividend stream, and internal rate of return on income based on uh, multiple cash flows and a single cash flow. I hope this video was helpful in you completing the homework, and I'll talk to you soon.